Have you ever woke up one day and wondered, what the hell am I gonna do today? And then you realize, oh my gosh, there's some amazing Nintendo news coming your way because that's what we have today. Surprisingly, quite a few things surrounding Nintendo Switch 2, despite there not really being like a new leak or anything. Sort of weird because Level 5 did an event this morning that involved a ton of game delays that has everyone talking about Switch 2. And then we have some interesting news dealing with Sonic of all things. What the heck is going on with Sonic? Well, Sega gives us some details there and then what is going on with this? I, this is the one that I'm maybe most confused about today, and I'm I'm so confused. I, I might need to take some 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 pills and calm myself down a little bit. Just just pop them, pop them. Uh, okay, okay, okay. We're not popping pills today. But uh, what's interesting here is that Xbox has now spoken publicly that they want to bring all of their games, even Game Pass, to Nintendo. And well, Nintendo's next platform. What? Wait a second. We're about to get a, a, a Elder Scrolls Six. Okay, calm down, Nate. Oh, and by the way, yeah, we do happen to have some brand new Switch 2 rumors courtesy of a channel friend. So, you know what? What are we waiting for? Let's dive right in. <laughs> First up, Level 5 had a bunch of news drop today, and let's start with Professor Layton. So, Professor Layton and the New World of Steam dropped a brand new three-minute gameplay trailer today, and it's pretty great considering everything else seen from the game before with cutscenes, so it's nice to see gameplay. There are some differences this time around from what the series was on Nintendo's handheld systems. The gameplay has a slightly different angle, with Layton and Luke now standing at the bottom of the screen. There also is an interesting shop and we get a look at one of the game's many puzzles. Of course, given what we knew about this game for some time, many anticipated it, it releasing possibly in the first half of 2024. Unfortunately, they have pushed the release window of the game, as announced today, to 2025. Level 5 boss Akihiro Hino made clear the delay was simply to ensure the game could be the best it possibly could be, but made no indication on what the actual issues are. As many are guessing, there is a lot of speculation that the game will be moving to Nintendo's next hardware, making that the primary brux of the delay. Also add in that while prior cutscene trailers had Nintendo Switch logos, this gameplay session mysteriously is absent of Nintendo Switch references. Of course, the game is likely to release on Switch. They seriously don't need a powerhouse piece of hardware, but they likely want it to be a cross-gen release to maximize sales on new and old hardware alike. Another hotly anticipated game is the detective RPG DECA Police, which was supposed to release this year. Some confusion around the release date happened today, however, because during the presentation they clearly said the game is scheduled for release in now post-2024. This led people to wonder how a game scheduled for this year is suddenly a 2025, maybe even a 2026 release. However, the official X account for the game did post a clarification that it wasn't meant to say post-2024, just 2024. Again, this is viewed speculation they are pushing the game until Nintendo Switch 2's expected launch next year, and likely again a cross-generation title. Now, we're not done because you cozy game lovers out there may remember a familiar series from Level 5 as well, In Fantasy Life, and today we got another look at Fantasy Life I, The Girl Who Steals Time. It's a direct sequel to the beloved 3DS original, and one huge thing they really focused on in the trailer was the massive visual overhaul, really emphasizing how much better this game looks than its original 3DS prequel. One of the more interesting aspects is the release timing of the game yet again. Yes, it said in the trailer it was summer 2024, but during the presentation, Level 5's boss added that they actually have decided on the exact release date already, but they won't announce it right now for quote unquote strategic reasons. Again, this fuels the Nintendo Switch 2 speculation all over again, where you likely don't want to drop exact release dates until after the system is revealed if you're making a game that's cross-gen. All in all, it was a really good show for Level 5, even if mysteriously everything seems to be working on now is being pushed back for reasons unknown officially. Look guys, I don't know if this has anything to do with Nintendo Switch 2, but I can't deny that it's pretty suspicious.
Now, unfortunately for the Sonic the Hedgehog series, Sonic Superstars apparently has underperformed. We actually have a quote from their recent financial briefing, so let's just dive right in. Sonic Superstars was released in October, which is a slightly weaker start than we had anticipated. But in reality, when Sonic IP sells the most is mainly November to December, and more than 90% of this title's marketing cost will be spent in the Thanksgiving and holiday season from November onwards. Although in the financial results announced today, we are forecasting this title sales slightly weaker with the view of the status of the start mentioned above, we plan to continue our marketing efforts to sell on the same level as Sonic Frontiers. Now, just to give a little update on Sonic Frontier sales, it sold roughly 3.5 million earlier this year. It's probably creeping a little bit closer to 4 million, but we didn't get a big update on that. But hey, you know what? They also want the Sonic series to eventually become as big as the Mario series. So who really knows what they're doing? We're just here to deliver the news. And I guess Sonic Superstars is underperforming. I guess that's what happens when you launch the same week as Mario Wonder and Spider-Man 2. I think gamers were a little busy. Now this is maybe the most interesting story of the day because it deals with Xbox because you know what? It turns out that they are really wanting to bring all their games, including Game Pass, over to Nintendo and not just Nintendo, what is happening? Now all of this came from Xbox's chief financial officer and corporate vice president of finance and operations, Tim Stewart, during a Wells Fargo TMT summit. Here's what he had to say specifically regarding Nintendo. While I'm not announcing anything broadly today, we want to bring our first party experiences and our subscription services like Game Pass to every screen that can enjoy those experiences. That means smart TVs, mobile devices, and yes, it means places we once viewed as competitors in the past like PlayStation and Nintendo. We're trying to get things on Nvidia's GeForce Now service. Yes, that means Microsoft is talking like a third party entity. Of course, we don't know if this will expand beyond the current deals for Call of Duty or anything, but it's clear Microsoft's focus is shifting. Though it's a weird speech he gave at the summit because it also includes mentions that they want to strengthen Xbox system sales, which could be weakened without exclusive content. However, them expanding beyond their own console has been happening for a little while now. So again, as he said, this isn't an announcement, but clearly it's a long haul goal. They someday want their games and Game Pass on Nintendo and PlayStation and anywhere that can handle it, just like a multi-platform studio. And I gotta say, it's pretty crazy to think about Microsoft, the multi-platform studio, after all of these years. Look, the Xbox sales are actually like down 50% year over year. Uh, Switch sales are down in many countries year over year by 20%. Ugh, man, the Xbox sales were never really that great in the first place. So. I can kind of see where we might get another generation of Xbox systems. I don't know, but it's going to come with the caveat that they really don't care if it sells. So it is what it is, guys. We might get Microsoft games on Nintendo Switch 2 at some point beyond Call of Duty. Who knew? Now, lastly, we're going to have some fun talking about some Nintendo Switch 2 rumors because you know what? We don't have that many going on out there, and this does come from a friend of the channel uh, who always likes to note that he is not a leaker, but somehow still continues to occasionally put rumors out there about things he's heard. But again, these rumors aren't super crazy, so I think they're in the realm of believability or like expectations, especially if you look at what other systems are doing. But it is something that I do think is interesting to talk about, and so we're going to dive into it. And these rumors come from none other than Mike Odyssey. And what's interesting is he put out a post on X that said the following. He was told a big feature for Switch 2 will be the ability to live stream on Twitch and YouTube. And personally, I presume locally from the system. Like, I don't know how else you would do it. Either way, the feature will be integrated within the Switch 2 operating system. There is also something about a new reward system. Now, we've actually talked about a reward slash achievement system being a possibility, but it is interesting thinking about the live streaming space. This functionality is already built into and supported by PlayStation and Xbox and has been seen for some time now over multiple generations of systems. So I wouldn't say that this is a quote unquote big feature as Mike put it, but I do think what's big about the idea of them supporting it is they may finally be fully modernizing their online services. 
As such, I'm actually more excited for what this could mean beyond this solo streaming feature. Now, just as a general reminder, Mike Odyssey has put up rumors and stuff in the past, and some of the stuff hasn't been true. Some of the stuff was true. So look, he's a friend. I don't really know what's going on. I didn't reach out to him about this because frankly, he already posted it publicly. But what I will say is we will discuss this further on the Nintendo Prime podcast tonight. Now, did someone say the Nintendo Prime podcast? That's right. I just want to end this show by reminding everyone we have a live show tonight for the Nintendo Nintendo Prime Podcast featuring Mike Odyssey, Andres Restart, Jake Randall, Eric Moore, my co-host, myself, and for the first time ever, Nintendo Land coming on. We have a killer show for you guys. I'll give you a little preview of what some of the topics are here. We're going to be talking about the big games Nintendo's going to be having coming in 2024 and making some predictions there. We're going to be talking about Nintendo Switch 2 features, including the stuff that Mike Odyssey brought up. And on top of that, we're going to talk about our wants and desires, maybe dreams, hopes, or expectations for the next Mario game. And yes, folks, the next Mario Kart. Oh boy, guys, it's gonna be a pretty exciting episode. Hope to catch all of you guys there. Look, I'm doing all right over here, all right? Hopefully you're doing all right too. Catch you in the next video.